Hey everybody, Brett from Astartes Gaming here, back with another episode of our Total War Rome 2 Let's Play. What we're playing as Rome itself, um, this is the second episode in our campaign. And I'm recording this immediately following the first, so I haven't been able to obviously see a reception to the first episode, but I hope it's good, because I uh, had a blast recording that first episode. It's um, a lot of fun to be back playing Total War again. It is one of my favorite strategy fr uh, franchises out there. And... Uh, I think it, it it's a fun game to play on the channel because it doesn't require a ton of modding on my part like RimWorld or um, a ton of grinding off camera like Kenshi. So it's just something sort of like Crusader Kings where I can sit down and play and just kind of you know chat with you guys through the video. And uh, those those types of games are always kind of relaxing for me. So anyways, last time around we finished our war with the Etruscans and... I'm assuming at some point today, Carthage will declare war on us. If they don't, I might kind of preempt it with a declaration of my own. But let's make sure we've got everything taken care of before we go ahead and advance this turn. I'm pretty sure that we do. We've got our navy just hanging out here. Um, actually, one thing I'd like to do is I'd like to remove um, our faction leader from this navy and make him the leader of this legion. So what we'll do is we'll swap him out for somebody else doesn't really matter who uh, who do we have let's see Lucius Papirius Cursor you look like an admiral you've got kind of that stern sour face um, and either way this is gonna be expensive let's do the one with the lower upkeep I think yeah we'll do that okay and uh, we'll have to wait a turn before we can move him over to this first legion. I'd also like to get them back to Italia, if at all possible, because that's where we're going to be able to recruit our troops from. Not going to be able to do any recruiting here for a while. So, it's actually unfortunate. Had I, um, what do you call it? Had I, uh, subjugated the Etruscans here, I could have levied troops from them directly, so I could have just, uh, levied their um, like Italian cavalry potentially, but, <clears throat> excuse me, um, because I took it for myself, I'm not going to be able to build, um, a recruitment building here, at least not for a little while. I could build it in this slot, but food is going to become an issue because the recruitment buildings do require food. So I'd have to upgrade that to a fishing port and it's just going to take a lot of effort. So I think we are going to have to sail you on home get into the water and then I guess do whatever's fastest is that faster or is this faster it's probably faster to do that okay so they're on their way home you guys meanwhile uh, we could probably get rid of some of them and replace them uh, replace them with velites that might not be such a bad idea I can only recruit one of them right now, though, so let's just wait. I think that will be it. I don't think there's anything else that's required of us. I could send out a diplomat, but I don't see any reason to right now. So let's just leave it at that. Oh, we can issue an edict, of course. Um, right, so public order is at zero, though that will recover quickly because it's got a minus 20 from conquest right now. So next turn, that minus 20 won't be there, and it'll be um, at least plus 20, maybe plus 21. So I'm not really concerned with public order. Food is also fine, so bread and games isn't really necessary. Uh, I think we'll just do tax rate. Let's get some more money flowing our direction. And we'll be able to recruit a champion next turn, too. Okay, research complete. And Decimus Junius Brutus is home, so we can reassign him. Let's go ahead and grab that new tech, so we just finished this. I, again, would like to... No, 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 sorry. Oh, wait. Yeah, we just got champions. What am I saying? I was right. I would like to get dignitaries next. Then we'll have access to all of the agents. It looks like these uh, remnant fleets want to give us some trouble. Let's have our new admiral take care of them. Are you still going to be in our attack range? Yes, perfect. So let's just dispatch you right there and then... 
will auto resolve that no reason to fight it out for whatever reason this camera mod doesn't do well with <laughs> engagements it always zooms in like past them uh, so that's kind of a cool unit Italian noble infantry I'll take the money uh, wow that ranked him up quite fast actually I was kind of hoping to avoid that because I don't want him to gain additional influence per turn but that's okay we'll go strategist again but he's gonna be a dedicated um, admiral so we're gonna stick with the navigator over the tactician okay and you can start sailing back it's gonna be difficult to protect that port also public order there's not gonna be great so if they stay there they should be able to kind of flip that back to positive right um, if I turn that into a fishing port I think I can get away with building a field of Mars here I might not keep it there permanently but I'd like to build a auxiliary camp that'll let me recruit uh, I don't really care about them I'm more interested in the third tier uh, these two units of cavalry so if I can get um, obviously better than what, what are we recruiting now for cavalry these guys that are complete garbage that would be ideal so yeah we'll try to build them there though I think we can actually get the same troops if we had built it here right yeah so I guess I don't need it there do I I can build that pretty much anywhere to be honest have I upgraded this one yet no so I'll just build it there that's easier it, because it's gonna be a real pain to get out here for um, troop recruitment anyways so let's just turn that into a villa and that means that this doesn't need to be a fishing port necessarily I'll just leave it as is for right now and we'll save that money to put towards something else uh, you guys meanwhile need to come ashore I don't think they're gonna quite make it Oh, okay, well, at least they're on foot. Though I won't be able to recruit for them this turn anyways. Um, you, meanwhile, should start marching south. Need to get them to... I mean, right on the border here is fine. Because we'll probably need to send them to Neapolis to deploy them. That'll be the fastest way, because jumping to and from ship from the coast is uh, very slow. So let's... Actually, hold on. You can recruit better troops now, can't you? Yes, perfect. So, do not force march. Just regular march down here. We're going to need to figure out how we want to distribute these troops. Um, initially, at least, we're going to be very infantry heavy. Because there's not a whole lot else for us to go with. So, I think what I'd like to do... Is... I could transfer some of the Hastati over here. That might be wise replace not all of the Hastati but most of them with Principes. I'd like them to be the bulk of our army. We'll try to do like five Principes maybe. At least four Triari and then somewhere between two and four Hastati. Uh, we'll probably just completely disregard the Rorari because if we have you know better spear infantry these aren't necessary. Um, and then I'd like to completely phase out the Leves. Or levies, levies. I, I don't want to call them levies because that's a different word. But I think this is actually the root of that word. I don't know. Anyways, Velites can um, withstand a little bit more punishment. They're a little bit better in terms of damage output. And they can throw flaming javelins versus just the regular ones. So they're just a superior unit. Which is not that much more expensive. Anyways, let's get as many principes as it will allow us to. So four right now. That's fine. Um, to preserve our upkeep a little bit, let's disband anything we don't intend to keep. Actually, mm, hang on to them because I'm going to pass them over to you, I think. That makes more sense. Then we don't have to like re-recruit everything until like we're ready to do that. Um, meanwhile, I think our spy... We can see that. I don't need anybody to scout that for me so I'm not sure what she should be doing 
maybe I should be checking this stuff out up here. Because we do know that there's a war happening right about here. And I'd like to keep an eye on that. Because obviously we will need to expand up here eventually. And uh, it would be ideal if the enemies kind of weakened each other but not uh, did anything decisive. So they just kind of continued to fight it out over nothing. All right. We're out of money. Let's see if anybody wants to trade with us or pay us for non-aggression packs. The well Dalmate. Ah, see another female ruler. And let your words She'll pay us for trade. Anger or Maybe a thousand? As you wish no, them. looks like 500 at best. Well, I'll take it. Money's money. And women. Epirus hates us. As long as they don't declare war, that's fine. Massilia likes us a little bit more. Let's not get too friendly with them, because we are going to conquer them. Syracuse, on the other hand, I'm happy to, to such an get as close, such as close with people. as allowed. Doesn't look like they're up to an alliance yet, but that could change, again, depending on what Carthage does. I'm actually genuinely surprised Greetings, Carthage hasn't friend. declared war yet. I've played this campaign before, it's been a while, but I have played it before. And hearts. generally, I've had them declare war as early as like turn three. But it looks like that's Your not um, going to happen this time. These trade agreements are really going to help us, though. Do you want a non-aggression pact? I don't plan on conquering no, you in the next couple turns. No? Your okay. Offer. Fair enough. Um, that gives me a bit of money. Do I need to pacify any of these factions? Minus three, minus one, plus eight. Wow, we're doing quite well, actually. Um, hmm... We'll put him in charge of an army in just a moment. Could do that now, actually. I don't know that that's necessary now, though. Um, it might be worth securing a promotion for you. That's going to hurt our um, loyalty a little bit, though. So it probably dropped everybody by, like, one. Something like that. Maybe it was two points. But anyways, I think he's earned it. He's had a couple of victories. And... Maybe we'll have him seek a wife. It's going to cost him some influence. He's got enough, though, and we have the money for it. That's going to give him a little bit more influence over the next couple turns, too, and with a wife, uh, he could gain even more. We're not going to be able to have children until we do, though, and it doesn't seem like we can form any sort of, um, what do you call it, like arranged marriage with another faction because he's not the actual faction leader. So I don't see any point in waiting. It'd be cool to, you know, do as many diplomatic marriages as possible, but I just don't see that being doable. Unless this guy dies soon and passes this over. I forgot to make him my heir, actually. Is that worth doing? Um, is that going to hurt? Whatever, I'm just going to do it. Let's see if that lowered people's loyalty. I don't know why it would. Uh, I can't tell, to be honest. I wasn't paying that close attention. I don't think it did, other than maybe. They were already at 6. They were already at negative 1. I don't recall what they were at. But yeah, he should be our um, our heir. And then we'll go ahead and arrange that marriage. Hopefully she's a decent character. So, family duty, not bad. Let's see. Plus 5 corruption, but um, she does gain plus one influence per turn domestic goddess so plus two zeal plus one influence per turn and plus five chance to having children nice so not the worst character um he's actually worse for her well for everybody than uh she's actually quite good um i need an army down here actually our public order is kind of in the toilet cultural difference dif ah, differences so next turn we should probably upgrade this because we need that latin culture influence Okay, uh, I think that is it for this turn. Okay, um, two more construction projects done. Looks like we have a population surplus there we can use, and our principes have been recruited. So let's take a look at that population surplus. I think I'm actually going to wait for it to tick up to four and go ahead and spend it here so that we can, of course, uh, build a farm there. Meanwhile, let's get this turned into a Shrine of Neptune so that we can gain a little bit more cultural influence. Um, Hellenic is actually taken over here. I think that's the damn... the 
damn, uh, what do you call them, Syracusians, and the Carthaginians are also Hellenic. Actually, no, they're not. They're, uh, are you guys Hellenic? I guess technically. Um, Punic. Yeah, that's what I was trying to think of. Because they are sort of descendant from... No, no, never mind. Anyway, we need to continue upgrading all these buildings. I'd also like to save some money for our armies, if at all possible. Um, so that's going to cost me another 1700 right there. We are good on food, though. Honestly, that's not as important, though. That is going to improve our income ever so slightly, but I'm pretty sure we're still at 100% Latin here. Yeah, so... I don't need the public order or the conversion from that, so I don't see any reason to rush it. Uh, Cornelius Scipio, you're going to get replaced by, where is he, uh, Decimus Junius Brutus, and we're going to put him in charge of a cavalry bodyguard. And then, I would like you to get out of Force March, if you would be so kind, and trade some units. So, I'm going to keep at least four Hastati, so let's give them two, and then I'm going to give him all of the Leves and take the Velite that he has. And actually, you can have the Rorari too. Okay. So, I'd like to get at least three more Hastati in this army, but that's not a huge priority. Right now, what I'd like to do is take the second Legion and continue recruiting the expensive troops. So another Principe, and then I'd like four Triari. I don't think we'll be able to afford all four right now though, so let's do one Velite, and then I can do one of them. So maybe next turn we'll be able to afford the other three. I can also recruit some Equites, but honestly they're just not very good. Not very good at all. I, I have never been more underwhelmed by cavalry in Total War than playing this campaign. So, wherever their army is, it's not here. They're probably somewhere in between. I'm sure they've been going back and forth for a little while. What about you guys up here in Subres? Um, oh, Liguria is at war with them too. Okay. Interesting. Well, nothing to be done about it. You guys are just hanging out. Let's have you try to maintain some public order here. Hopefully that goes up a decent little amount. Um, yeah, so that was enough to give us a, a boost of six. So overall we have a net gain of five. We're going to need to convert the populace here too. Unfortunately, um, until we take this from Carthage, we're not going to be able to. So they're skewing Punic right now. Actually, it looks like Latin is uh, making a comeback. Okay. Cool. Diplomacy. She warming up to Enter the thought of marriage seat. yet? Yes, actually. Money. Oh, she did it. You speak with okay. And That's going to bring us very close to their faction. Um, we're not in an alliance or anything, so it doesn't really change that. Um, it wouldn't hurt to have military access there, I guess. If we need you to go to war with, with Epirus, we could grace. safely land Except troops there and then and send them... South. I don't think they're going to declare war, though. If they make me, I'm happy to do it, though. Especially since uh, that will improve our relations with um, Athens and Sparta. Though I'm probably going to subjugate them, so I'm not too concerned about long-term alliances. Uh, the Etruscans are still just sailing around. Can we just call this off, guys? No. I was going to see if they'd confederate, but... Uh, they're apparently still pissed off, even though they can't do anything about it. So, I think that's pretty much it for that. Um, so if we go to Faction now, um, you can see that she is here. But we can't actually interact with her because she's still Queen somewhere else. But she is a character that shows up on this, and I assume... I haven't actually tried this, but when her faction is defeated, she should come and be a character in our faction because she's already tied here. Unless, of course, she, like, dies in the siege or something, which I greatly hope she doesn't. Um, do I want to send a diplomat to anybody? I don't think so. But I can't afford to buy loyalty. So I think we just have to leave it there. 
Unless, do I want to give you guys... Yeah, screw it. I'll give you one more of them. Oh, I can do two, actually. There we go. Okay, so Scipio Asina is home again. We'll try to find a new position for him or something. Um, our spy has been noticed or detected. And we have a mission issued to recruit a champion. Well, I need to do that anyways, so I think I will. Uh, I'll do it in Neapolis, just because the army that is going to take on said champion is going to be marching south. So let's go ahead and do it here. So what are our options? We have Decimus, Lorius, Lenatus, who is going to boost our campaign map movement range. I do like that. Uh, 10 additional experience gained per turn for the army. That's pretty good too. And then some public order for local edicts. Not really concerned about that. We have Appius, so Celius Figulus, who's going to increase chance of wounding enemy agents. Um, I don't care about that so much. He'd be a decent character if we were going to send him kind of out on his own. But I'm looking for somebody to stick with our army. So army bonuses. And then finally, Marcus Peltrosius. Garus, that's an interesting name. 20 additional wealth from adventuring, minus 3 upkeep for all land units, plus 20 morale for all land units. I like the minus 3% upkeep, and we can level him to improve that. But I think this guy's campaign map movement range is ideal. And I like the, the 10 experience, too. So let's choose him. Decimus Lorius Lanatus. Welcome to our empire kind of we're not really an empire yet okay um, and so that's gonna give me oh I don't care about that but whatever the game's happy that we did it okay so you guys can continue your march south can't have them cross the border yet so they need to remain in Italia let's give them three more triari that's gonna put us at what 18 so I think the final two slots will be Cavalry, but eventually I'd like to phase down the Infantry and probably the Skirmishers a bit. I don't know if we'll run Archers, because that's not very Roman, but I'd like to have more Cavalry and I'd like to be able to fit in either some Scorpions or some Ballista. Balliste, yeah. But I'd like to have at least one, if not two, pieces of Light Artillery in each army and then Later on when we're doing more conquest, I think I'll probably run a separate army that's just like four onagers or something for whenever we're assaulting a town or a city. But anyways, that's that's adequate for the time being. You'll join them on the following turn. You guys can hang out here. I do need one more Hastati there, so that's what we'll do. That's going to give them a total of six plus the two Rorari plus the four Leves. That makes them an adequate fighting force. They won't be, you know, super strong or anything. These Histadi are not the best by any means, but they'll get the job done. We'll let the second legion do the most of the fighting, and they can kind of support and deal with um, villages and things like that. Right. Um, still don't have enough there. I don't have money to upgrade anything, so we'll just have a quick look. Um, that farm is finished. So we'll probably build a farm there. This one can be like a proper farm, and then this one will be like a herding ground or something. Uh, it'll give us a little bit more income for a little bit less food, but overall I think it's worth it. The alternative is something like grain pits, but army replenishment isn't going to matter here. We're never going to have any armies here. It's just a really unideal place for anything. Too hard to get in and out of. So let's... um make a quick jump into diplomacy I should have just done that whoops green 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 um, I wanted maybe Athena give you military wisdom, access with you guys the... nope Athena has blessed... okay fair enough and Syracuse the blessing we've already of got the Olympians upon military you. access so defensive alliance is probably desirous. next unless we go straight to military they're not at war with Carthage yet, neither are we, so... 
It's not going to change much. I could decide to go to war with Epirus, but that gives me this. Larissa's already been taken by Athens, so unless I go to war with Athens, that's just kind of it. Hmm. Plus, if I go to war with them, I've got to immediately deal with these two um, armies. These aren't navies, they're um, armies on transports. I don't like that they've been sitting there, but they don't appear to have any interest in attacking. They would have done it by now. So I'll just leave them be. And I think that's it. Apparently there's rampant piracy in our seas. Uh, I'm just going to go with hunted, I guess. I don't plan on recruiting any more naval units for a while, especially not so many that I would need additional recruitment capacity. It's not even giving me a discount, it's just telling me I can make more of them. Versus this is going to lower piracy penalties in local sea regions, um, and then if I ignore them that's going to increase. So this is probably the most beneficial to me. Research is complete, we can start recruiting dignitaries now. So with that out of the way, we can either go into something militaristic, like training reforms, which is going to slightly lower upkeep and recruitment costs. It's also going to allow us a tier 3 auxiliary barracks, which is the one we want. Though, I'm not sure that we're in a position to even go for that yet. We could also go for physical conditioning, which is going to improve morale of all, all of our armies. Um, give us practice fields, which I don't really care about. Or we can go Battering Ram, which gives us a pre-siege Battering Ram. Um, also lets us build workshops. I think I'd rather go for... Let's at least start down this tree. We don't have to necessarily go to advanced construction techniques in one shot, but let's at least start working toward it. And Subarus is destroyed, so that means that... Um, oh, hello. Yeah, right, great. So, Ligeria took Medlan here, which is Milan or Mediolanum, Mediolan, Mediolanium, I've seen several different names for it, but it's modern day Milan, um, the Romans called it Mediolanum. Anyways, Ligerians took that, and the Messellians swooped in behind them and took Genua out from under them. So we'll probably have to go to war with the Massilians sooner than we expected, because I, I need that to complete the set for that province. Troubled populace. Well, that's fine, because we're about to land an army. Are you, you guys better not be, like, raiding us or anything. They might be. But we're at war with them. I expect that from them. Okay. So you guys can hop across the border now. I think that will improve public order, yeah. I should upgrade this to an auxiliary camp. Is that going to give us anything immediately? Just the Hastabi. Um, war dogs are also nice. I guess I could take some war dogs until we get artillery. But I should start working toward that. In the meantime, a lot of stuff to upgrade here. Should I go for a Shrine of Jupiter? Are you guys good? I think they're pretty good. You can go meet up with them for military training. By the way, always do that after you're done moving this army because as soon as that character, the the veteran, as soon as they join this army, that army loses all of its movement points. Even if the veteran still had movement points left and the army still did. For whatever reason, when they join, just movement done. So that's why I did it after, instead of when they were closer. Because I wanted them to make it down there this turn. Alright, food is okay. Let's go for... I don't really need the public order. I think I'd rather have this. That leaves me with 600 if I need to throw some money at anything. I don't think I do, though. I don't think I do. Hmm. Do I want to go to war with Epirus? Not really. I'm kind of hoping that the other Greeks will just take them out. I I thought by now we'd be at war with Carthage, but if they're going to give me a little bit more time to build my forces, I'll take it. 
I might sail you guys over to here, though. Let's do that. You're more or less ready. So if you can sail there. That way, when war kicks off, I'll have an army ready to march south and take this. This army, meanwhile, if necessary, can march down through here, take Lilibaeum, and then from one of those ports, we sail on Carthage itself. Again, avoiding naval transport as much as possible, because we have the advantage on land, they have the advantage on sea. Quickly checking in with our faction. Oh, wow, House of Julia is pissed. Why are you guys so upset? Like, what's going on here? Difficulty level gives us a just a permanent minus 25. Um, which is offset by our Imperium level, thankfully. They hate barbarians. Not sure why that's relevant. We're not barbarians. Government type, minus 10. So maybe they want us to be an empire. We can actually change that. Not right now, but it is possible. Though it'd be kind of interesting to see how long we can maintain a republic. Ah, uh, whoops. No, I was correct. There we go. And then what else? Diplomat minus two. Okay. I, I don't understand why them hating barbarians is relevant. So they're also getting a minus ten. Maybe they consider Greeks barbarians and us forming alliances with Greeks pisses them off I don't know okay sure um, what I will do is let's raise another force under is that you yeah Lucius Julius Lebo and we'll spend zero on his existing bodyguard that's the one I want anyways we'll put him in Neapolis I'm not going to recruit anything to him just yet, but I want him there that, so that we can slowly add troops to that legion. So Legio, uh, shoot, I forgot what three is in Latin. I think it's, is it Trace, like Spanish? That doesn't seem right, but maybe it is. Anyway, uh, Leg Legio three Gemina. I'm supposed I'm, I'm ah, excuse me, I'm supposed, ah, god damn it. I suppose I'm fine with that name. Though what I'd like to do is kind of give it each legion its own flavor. Um, for example, with this legion, Equestris, I don't know if that's supposed to be anything related to... Actually, let me check. Okay, so a little backstory behind that name. Though, apparently, uh, the Equestris was the 10th legion, not the 2nd. It was actually the first legion raised personally by Julius Caesar. And it got its name from the fact that he actually mounted legionaries on uh, horseback. Um, and it was done as like a ruse. I don't think they actually deployed that way. But um, that's how it sort of got its name. But Equestris is also the old Roman name for um, a modern city in Switzerland. So somewhere in the Alps here. Uh, not one that's in the game, but it is like a place that would have existed around this time. So um, this could be in reference to the city, though the city is not Roman at this point. And it could also be a callback to that, which um, of course didn't happen yet. So the name's not really super relevant, but it does, you know, have ties to like equestrianism and horse riding and stuff. So I figured this legion could have maybe a little bit more cavalry or a little bit more specialized toward cavalry than other legions. Versus um, the first legion, Italica, will be like the most Roman because it's the first and it's from Italy. So we'll make sure they have like very little, if any, cavalry, no archers. Um, it'll just be like straight heavy infantry, a couple skirmishers and some artillery or something. And we'll try to give each legion its own flavor like that. Um, anyways, that's enough for now. Let's advance. Yeah, the history for this game is kind of all over the place. So... Um, the 10th Legion is actually the one that, well, at least that 10th Legion, there's several 10th Legions. Uh, that particular 10th Legion raised by Julius Caesar was the one that accompanied him on his conquest of Gaul. And um, so obviously it would not have existed yet, especially under that name. So I'm not sure what reference they're trying to make here, but again, um, we'll kind of just go with it. Interesting. 
So Carthage and Carthago Confederated. Now, because I'm running that mod that sort of allows you to do all sorts of diplomatic things, regardless of whether or not you have the right culture to do that particular thing. Uh, actually, let's leave them in Force March or Double Time. Um, the AI can do that as well. So I can confederate with other Latin cultures, which in this case we conquered the only other one. But um, the same is true for Punic states. So Carthage and Nova Carthago can confederate if they want. Um, the different Hellenic uh, factions can confederate. Uh, it's not just the player. Uh, you know, I keep forgetting to do this. Let's do it before I forget again. If we go into characters, um, I've been neglecting the households. So I can do plus one cunning there. That's your only option. What about you? Plus five melee attack skill for all sword armed units. That's fine. That's actually pretty useful. Um, you don't have anything. You're not here yet. What do you have? Plus one cunning. I don't want you to be more cunning. I want you to be less cunning. <laughs> uh, you have nothing. I can give that cunning to anybody I want, but I don't really want anyone to be more cunning. Authority's fine. Zeal's fine, but I don't want them plotting against me. Did you just age a ton? I thought you were younger than that. No, I'm thinking of him. Yeah. Let's throw some money their way. That'll bring them to minus 8 versus minus 18. Kind of bring them back in line. I could throw some at Papyria too, but I don't necessarily want to right now. It leaves me a little bit of money to play with. Not a lot. Uh, it would be nice to get some more trade income headed this way. Though, let's see, 30 versus... Yeah, I mean, that's 150 extra wealth per turn. That's the only upgrade I can do. Is that going to give me an additional garrison too? Might be wise then. Yeah, because this place does get hit a lot, especially when we go to a, go to war with Carthage. It's much easier for them to sail to Neapolis than Brundisium or Arminium. So they're going to attack Neapolis the most, which is partly why I raised that legion. So you're here waiting... You are waiting on the ability to train some troops, which uh, is probably not coming for a while, actually. I almost wonder if we should have just gone and conquered north. Maybe we should. Uh, it's going to suck to have to pull these guys off, but we could take this entire province up here, Cisalpina. We could take those three, maybe try to make peace with the Massilians again. But if we're just going to sit here, I don't want to necessarily declare war on Carthage if I don't have to. Uh, maybe I do. Maybe I'd rather just get it over with. Though they are going to be stronger because they did just confederate. Syracuse, are you at war with them yet? No. Yeah, I say we go north then. I say we go north. Not going to have that cavalry, though. I suppose I can just... Hire some mercenaries? Ooh, I do like Tarantine Cavalry. They're very expensive, though. 900 for two, and that's going to be 650 per turn, roughly. That's a lot of money. There's also Citizen Cav, which is roughly the same. These guys can skirmish, though, but they're still pretty decent cavalry on top of that. These guys are more melee-focused, but honestly... These guys are not that much worse in melee. They just have a little bit less charge bonus. But are almost equally competent in melee combat. So I guess we're going north. Let's force march. We'll get there faster. Sure. Hop in there. And you guys, unfortunately, are going to have to get right back into the water. Maybe we'll have them do a naval assault on Genua. That could work. Well, there's not much else to be done. Right? Oh, we can try to trade with Carthage. Do My guess the is they're point. not going to be willing. Yeah, And Epirus, probably we not willing not either. Not a great idea because they're at war with a lot of people that we like. So we wouldn't want to uh, be too kind to them anyways. Alright. 
we'll end our turn, and then I think next turn, or maybe the following one, we'll declare war on Massilia, and probably Ligeria too, unless of course they get wiped out this turn. But I'd like to capitalize on the fact that they're weak from fighting each other, rather than going after like Venetti, the Venetti first, who have just been, you know, sitting here chilling. Another research project complete, and it looks like our veteran leveled up passively. That's always nice. What's this going to do? Plus 20 wealth from culture and plus 4 public order. Nice. I'll take that. Uh, it's worth mentioning Sparta just took Apollonia, so Epirus no longer has any land. They're just these two um, transport ships and this navy sitting there, um, and they'll probably wait until their attrition is so low that they're about to get wiped out and then they'll attack something in vain and that'll be the end of them. So you guys can actually get, that's with force marching though. We can get there on a regular march. Let's, let's take care of everything else before we do that. So first of all, so I mentioned in the last episode, I'd show you guys how overpowered veterans or champions can be. This ability right here, Siege Expert. So, minus 30 attritional losses when besieging or under siege for parent army. Minus one siege holdout time. Uh, double for city ports, so I guess minus two for siege holdout time, accompanying general. And you can get this up to three times. So, you can get it to minus 70 and minus three turns which most towns are four to five. So you can basically level this guy, and there's no limit to how many of these you can take in a row, by the way. Some abilities, you can only take like one, and you have to wait until a certain level before you can take the second. Um, you can take all three of these in a row. And so you can effectively starve out a town in one turn, which is a lot easier than having to actually assault it. And... If you are besieging or under siege, you have 70% less casualties, which means if somebody's trying to besiege you and you park an army in that town, you're not going to be taking like any attrition at all, and they can effectively wait there forever. Uh, if they don't have any abilities like that, they'll be suffering more attrition than you, and you can basically wait them out from within the city even. So I'm going to take that, and I'll probably take all three of those, and then I'll go for the one um, that boosts heavy infantry. So we were focusing on this. I don't think we necessarily need that yet, or even this for that matter, so let's go in on probably that one right now. So what's happening up here? You guys are looking pretty rough. You're looking pretty rough also. I've always found this to be a really interesting faction because essentially this the history behind Massalia here is that there were some Greeks that sort of sailed out exploring and decided to settle and set up like sort of a trade colony in um, Gaul here, basically southern modern day France. And so you've got this like weird mixture of Hellenic and Celtic which you don't really see anywhere else. So it's just kind of this really unique flavor to this faction. You can see that they have like hoplites, but they also have Celtic levy freemen and like Celtic slingers, Celtic skirmishers. Unfortunately, the game doesn't give them like any unique troops, but they're the only faction that can recruit Celtic and Hellenic troops. So that's kind of cool. Right. Um, what can you do to them? Eh, what the hell. Go ahead and try it. We'll probably fail, but it's not a big deal. We gotta keep her leveling. As long as she doesn't get wounded. Or killed, for that matter. Yeah, but that still got her a level. And next turn, I'll probably just park her and let her steal food from them. What's this gonna do? Minus one authority, plus one cunning? I don't really care about that. Alright, for her levels. I haven't found one that's as overpowered for spies, though I do like Thief. You can steal... Um, money and ancillary cards like these guys these things you can steal them from other characters and if you're successful that character's basically frozen for their next turn so you can not only get stuff from them but delay characters that way 
it's not overpowered in that like there's still a decent chance that you fail but I do like that ability so I'm gonna go with it okay still have money you guys I think are ready to march on that do I need to upgrade any buildings I should spend this somewhere I'm still waiting on this I could upgrade you yeah let's do that that is our only other major city I should probably kind of keep it in decent shape you are still sailing I might have to do this on the next turn because they won't mm, they won't be able to help out not that you guys are gonna need help okay so Massilia let's see cancel non-aggression pact oh we're two turns too early so we're gonna go from steadfast to like probably trustworthy or untrustworthy damn I guess it's fine okay we're dependable we didn't fall that far uh, and then we'll cancel trade this might drop us uh, no apparently not that was long enough in the making okay so you're just gonna have to sit this one out and the second legion's gonna do the bulk of the work again I almost did it I almost <laughs> tried to naval assault this so make sure it's a bronze sword and off we go So this is their main army, I believe. They do have armies back here, guarding their capital. Uh, let's auto-resolve that. This is not worth watching. 90... I think one of those was 96, and I accidentally clicked a 95, but oh well. It's 1%, which is probably like... 2... No, it's probably like 10 men or something. Still only lost 117, we'll occupy this. And that increases our Imperium level, so now we can have two of each uh, agent type and more armies. Not that we're even at our cap currently. I think we're at three, and one of those is just a guy standing by himself with his bodyguards. So effectively we can have three more armies and still fill that other one out. Okay, so we've taken this. You guys are cut off, so I'll be surprised to see them pull that off, but they might still be able to do it. Auto resolves are weird like that. And I think what I might do is land them. You guys continue marching to deal with this. Unless, maybe we'll be able to make peace and just kind of leave them there. I don't need that straight away, and unless I decide to take this too and open up a whole new can of worms in Gaul. Um, it might be better to just kind of leave them be and hold on to this. Because as soon as we go in here, then we discover these factions and they can declare war on us. So that might not be the best thing to do. I'm going to... Ooh, I don't have the money to convert that yet. That's okay. The only disadvantage to having these still be the um you know the other cultures that we can't use is we don't get the garrisons from them so we still get all the benefits it's just if we convert this over you can see we get a garrison too uh, same with this one we get the plus 30 commerce here we get plus 30 commerce and two um small support ships here we still get the four food and four wealth and there's no garrison so it's the same so really, we need to convert these two as soon as we possibly can so that we can get the garrisons. Uh, because they will take some time to replenish. I guess uh, let's end it there because I don't have any money to do anything else. Alright, so we have to choose here. Do we want to improve our military research rate for the next four turns or our civil research rate? I think I'm going to go civil because... After we finish this research, I think I want to do the next one on the path to advanced construction. So let's do that. Um, apparently the Ligurians and the Massalians have negotiated peace so that they can turn around and fight me. That's fine. I'll let them do that. That auxiliary camp is finally done. Uh, I don't care about seasonal conditions. So you guys. Uh, do we want to just declare war on the Ligurians too? This is a good time to maybe take them all out at once I'm curious what's your garrison look like so there's six 
they have suffered some attrition, but not as much as I would have thought. So six units there, one there, 11. So that's 18 for the Ligurians, plus another 11. So 29 in total versus our 18. But these are 18 full strength units versus 29 very, very highly diminished ones. So I'm thinking if we declare war, we can just pretty much fight this whole thing at the same time. Because the way this works with reinforcement is like the enemy of my enemy is my friend type thing. So if I attack the city and they're adjacent and in reinforcement range, I believe they will reinforce. But I could be wrong. It's been a while. Um, why don't you go ahead and sabotage them again either way? Cool, that one worked. Success is all I now then, do we have any treaties with them? No, so I can just declare war whenever I want. Let's do that then. Yep, yep. Hop to it. And because this is a bigger battle, I will fight it regardless. It doesn't look like the other faction is going to reinforce, so it's going to be even more one-sided than it could have been. Had we finished our research, we would have had not just ladders, but um, a battering ram as well. Oh well. You guys, meanwhile, are going to go into... Actually, if I force march them, I can get them all the way up there. That's not necessary, though. Let's put them in regular stance and just have them go garrison that village just in case um, they try to come and reclaim it. It'll also kind of help mitigate the public order issues. Um, we'll also start converting that now. I generally go with the civil. I don't really see a benefit to these other ones. They give you more um, wealth, a little bit more. This is the only one that actually gives you public order though, and I find public order to be a little bit more important than wealth generally. So we'll take that. And I think I can convert that too. Perfect. That's, again, all of my money, though. And are we going to end this episode with a giant siege? I think we are. And we may as well fight it now. If we wait, we're going to suffer attrition. Though, um, just for reference. So, the holdout here would have been three turns, but now it's only two. And if we have that ability leveled to level two then it would have been one turn if we had it leveled to level three it would have been zero turns which i don't even know how that would work i think you'd still effectively be one turn because otherwise you'd just walk up and it would be yours i think you'd still have to wait a turn for it to register so it, it'd be effectively one turn so um do we need to do anything else before we wrap this up because that'll be the last thing we do for sure I don't have any money, so I can't really do anything here. Did we piss anybody off? These guys are still pretty happy with us. Carthage is not as hostile as I would have thought. After we take Cisalpina, though, I think we will kind of focus in on them. Because this mess is causing me problems, and we're going to have to deal with it eventually. That did open up Greetings. potential trade plainly. with the Iberian tribes. You guys are, yeah, Iberian. I was going to say, they might be like Celtiberian because they're sort of on the border with Celts and whatnot, but we'll just call them Iberian. Already trading with them, and that's really all we can do. Sparta likes us a little bit less. Why is that? I guess our treaty stuff is just wearing Greetings. off. We are civilized folk, so you may speak um, as you wish. Okay, well, that's pretty much it. Syracuse, Defensive Alliance, maybe. I your no. embassy, inspired um, as it undoubtedly military, is no. by the... Okay. Then I guess we're fighting a big battle. And then we'll turn around and probably just attack those guys real quick. Let's quick save, just in case they get... And in we go. Alright, so uh, here we are, all set up. Um, in case it wasn't obvious already, I like to use more like realistic, kind of roleplay friendly tactics rather than being very gamey. So um, I'm not going to like try to exploit the AI by sending like one you know, force over here, anything like that. We're just going to go straight at them, try to overwhelm their defenses. Uh, in doing so, I have each ladder assigned to a unit of principes who is going to try to make a uh, sort of foothold on the walls around the gate. I'm going to send a unit of principes at the gate to set it ablaze. 
and then I will probably have the Triari or the Hastati follow the Principes up the ladders. And whichever one doesn't go up the ladders will be funneling through the gate once it's down. And I might use the Triari as cover as well, because I can put them in a Testudo. So if I set them up, like here roughly, I can have them kind of draw the enemy's fire to kind of free these guys up a bit. And I could even put the Velites behind them to give them some cover and, you know, allow them to kind of skirmish with people on the walls, because I don't have archers. Or artillery, for that matter. So, let's see. Before we get things going, I'd like you to assault the wall there. Hopefully the angle doesn't screw things up. You go here. I tried to pick the flattest part, but the walls are kind of all over the place. Uh, we'll get you here. And you roughly there. And then you guys, your job is to try to set that on fire. I wonder if they might be better in like an attacking Testudo doing that. Obviously they'd be safer, but I don't know if it'll let them stay in formation while they try. Okay. So we'll just kind of hang back and let them do their thing. Um, maybe I will put you guys out there. Let's let them get further up first. Or maybe not. Enemy reinforcements. Oh, are they going to deploy behind us? I didn't see any... No, they, they should all be inside. So I want you guys to set up there, and you guys to set up like here. But don't get in the way. I think they'll be fine. So I'm going to put them in uh, a Testudo, and then set up the uh, Velites behind them. Yeah, I knew they were going to have trouble. Velites, move up behind, like so. Um, use your flaming javelins. Because why the hell not? Okay, so yeah, that's what I figured. They're taking a ton of shots. Not much to be done about it. Okay, set up. I was hoping that these guys would at least distract. Oh, they can't be in... Ah, crap. I hate that it changes their formations like that. Um, just skirmish with whatever you can. Maybe try to set that on fire. I don't know. Do whatever you can do. I guess go skirmish with them. These guys were kind of wasted. Well, that's okay. Let's get you guys out of Testudo. Start getting to the ladders. Um, it looks like... Oh, hello. They're charging out of the gate that's been burnt down. Get over there, please. That was weird. I don't know why the game's, like, locking up on me. You guys start moving up to here. Do not run in there. Stay out here. How's that doing? It's almost done. You guys aren't just standing around, right? Like, make sure you're actually fighting. Um, I don't know if I can actually... It's very hard to get them to use the ladders. Maybe that'll do it. Yeah, that worked. Okay. You guys get up there. You should be charging in. Get on up there. And I don't know what you're throwing at, but aim a little bit further, would you? Actually, no, don't do that. Aim for like that. You guys should be fighting them. You're fighting over there. I don't know what you're doing, but that's fine. Here come the Hastati to reinforce, and this should be about over. Go after them. You guys get up here, and you're going to deal with the cavalry. Let's slow things down a little bit. The game is hanging up on me, and I don't know if that's just because there's so many things happening on screen, or what's the deal with that, but... Yeah. Why aren't you moving? Okay, they're just not cooperating, I guess. Well, that seemed to do it. Cool. As long as they're doing something. Um, you're fighting there. You guys are just standing around, so please try to contribute to something. Uh, you should be piling in there. You two set up here to skirmish. Uh, you guys were supposed to be going into town. And get over there however you need to do it. 
What are you doing right now? Captured the gates. That's good. Can you go after them, please? You're here. You should be attacking there. Or just attacking anywhere, really. That's one thing that's kind of always been an issue with the game, unfortunately, and something that they did at least improve in Attila, but they've never really improved here. Watch the friendly fire, guys. Um, is that the units don't do a great job of sort of conforming to battle. They stay very rigidly in their formations, even when it sort of doesn't make sense. And uh, it, it becomes very obvious in like sieges and stuff where you kind of just have a lot of chaos happening versus out in field battles you kind of do hold those formations to a degree and so um, it's maybe a little bit less noticeable okay whatever um, just keep piling in on those axe warriors it's all that's left and that's also their commander unit you guys stop running around like crazy people set up right here and hit them in the back with javelins or better yet, spare us the friendly fire and just pile in with your melee weapons. Because they're broken anyways, and that's pretty much the battle. General didn't even have to get his hands dirty. You can go clean them up, though. Okay, so there was one last unit hiding. Um, apparently these guys just managed to avoid detection back here until now. So, um, as soon as they break, the fight's over. Everybody else has been destroyed, but there are still a lot of towers, unfortunately, which is not helping our casualty count. Come on, Zergum. Get in there, everybody, pile in. We'll trample them to death, since they're apparently better fighters than us. Capture the tower. Um, somebody is throwing javelins. Oh, no, it's the tower. Okay, cool. There it is. Decisive victory. Okay, decisive victory. We have a lot of options here. Uh, so, occupy is probably what we're going to go with, but we could also subjugate, we could also sack or raise, or even liberate. Um, who would that have been? Oh, right, the Ligurians took it from somebody. I already forgot their name, though. In Subres? Was that what it? Anyways, we'll just take it for ourselves. It's going to increase our general's rank once more. Let's go ahead and improve his abilities. Um, it won't let me up our campaign movement range yet, so I could go with more cunning and gravitas. Or I can choose something new. Let's see. Cultural conversion could be good. Um, it'd be nice if that was public order from military presence rather than culture, because culture is not going to be present here necessarily. Um, replenishment rate would be fantastic. We could also start working on a different tree, like Commander, to give him more authority, which he could use. Yeah, let's do that. Let's get him some authority. Uh, what is this now? Eh, what the hell, why not? Okay. So, what is this? What can we convert it to? That's actually fine. Um, I'll leave it as is for the time being, but I'm going to convert it to probably an amphitheater. This will need to be converted as well. I should probably do that one just so we get the garrison. And then this will probably be consecrated ground. Which actually might be more important because this is predominantly Celtic. Yeah, let's do that first. Meanwhile, uh, you guys can't move, nor can you, but we'll have to deal with that Massilian army um, sooner rather than later. So I think that's where we'll leave it for today. Uh, we didn't get to start our war with Carthage, but that's fine. We're doing um, something just as productive, actually probably more so, because this is territory that we need. Down in Africa, not really so important. But um, don't forget to throw me any suggestions you guys have for how we can kind of spice this up in terms of role play. Uh, if you guys would like to you know, find a way to include I, I can't really do custom characters because I can't, I can't create new generals. Um, I just have the ones that exist now, and uh, obviously any children. But I guess um, we can do something with uh, the the children that are um, spawned later, uh, because I can I think save edit their names. I, I've done it before in Total War Till. I assume it's just as easy in this, but maybe not. So that's something that we could do, and maybe Legion names as well. 
but I'm going to try to keep to the same format, so this is probably all that will change, is like whatever their like kind of uh, nickname is. But we'll see. Uh, and don't forget to tell me what you think of the uh, playthrough as well, if you're enjoying uh, some Total War Rome 2. I know it's definitely a lot of fun for me to be playing Total War again, so I'm, I'm happy, but it matters what you guys think too. So, uh, anyways, thank you so much for watching. I had a great time playing some Total War Rome 2 with you. And I look forward to seeing you back here for the next episode.